transfer to a different camera to give you a better perspective in our mobile forecast center uh, of what we're seeing here in the city of New Orleans as Hurricane Ida is making its way uh, up from the southwest end of the state into us here. We are here at Burgundy Street um, heading towards Esplanade, but as you can see, I'm going to switch to a different camera here. This is one of the features of the mobile forecast center is that I can switch to the top of the camera. Let me wipe this off first too. Uh, that is a down tree uh, blocking the area here near Burgundy Street as we are headed towards Esplanade. Uh, so obviously this is impassable. Um, this is not necessarily widespread uh, and it is sporadic in terms of what we've seen in terms of down trees. Uh, as we've been making our way in and around the city of New Orleans and also the greater New Orleans area. Uh, we'll be heading out to Jefferson Parish in a bit, but we wanted to give you kind of a slice of what is happening as the storm is making its way from the southwest up here uh, and going further inland as Hurricane Ida is making its way uh, up through Louisiana. Uh, right now it is 332 on August 29th and we are going to be moving towards Uptown. Uh, we'll be going through the French Court here as much as we can. And keep in mind, we are there's some roofing tiles. Yes, roofing tiles uh, that we're seeing here. Uh, some of the more intense waves of wind and rain uh, we've seen in the past half hour or so. Uh, that is expected as the storm has made its way further inland uh, from the southwest area of the state and as it heads further inland uh, this area Orleans, Jefferson, St. Bernard uh, those areas are going to be feeling more of the effects of the storm and you've heard all through the day here about the as we hear during this time often deteriorating conditions uh, and certainly the conditions are worsening as we get through the day, especially in this area. Uh, Terrebonne and Lafouche parishes saw the brunt of it earlier on. Uh, and as the governor indicated in an earlier press conference, uh, this will be a very long day for the state of Louisiana as this storm is going to be impacting multiple parishes, multiple areas. Uh, again, keep in mind, we can only give you a vantage point uh, from this very narrow perspective that we have. but. With our capabilities here in the multiple, multiple mobile forecast center, we can kind of give you an idea of where we are in this point in time of the storm. Uh, the streets are fairly empty right now. And on the right, you'll be seeing a fire truck going through here. Uh, that is something that we haven't seen much is first responders on the street uh, has been, or as has been indicated for uh, the days leading up to here. First responders had indicated that they will not be able to respond to emergencies and help people uh, in these conditions at this point. Uh, we're not sure we're seeing multiple units right now. Uh, there's a fire truck and then there's the NOF NOFD unit as well. Uh, we're not sure what they're responding to, uh, but again, this is something that they've urged people to do is to shelter in place as the conditions are very dangerous for them to get out and respond to emergencies. Um, but obviously they are still, let's just kind of follow and see where this is going to take us here. Uh, just in case there's an emergency there, we'll be able to put eyes on it. Um, again, this is, uh, as you can see here, let me wipe the screen once again. The intersections are still lit here, so there is a certain level of electricity that we have at least here near the French Quarter. Some of the lights are still working. Um, Again, we are, if you're just joining us, uh, coming down on Rampart Street, headed towards Canal Street. Um, we just saw a couple of emergency vehicles uh, coming through. Uh, we're not sure where they're headed, uh, but we're going to investigate to see if there is anything that sh we should be keeping our eye on at this point. Um, yeah, we're going to be cut off here because it looks like there's a good amount of debris near Canal Street and some machinery that, that is blocking the area. As you'll probably see as we traveled uh, in and around this 
metropolitan area here, you'll see patches of a good amount of debris, um, and it depends on the level of trees lining uh, either side of the street. As you can imagine, as we have more trees on either side, you'll see more debris. Uh, on Canal Street, you won't see that much tree debris or limbs, so on and so forth. Uh, there is some garbage and garbage cans that have been blown around. That is to be expected here. Um, but so far, in the times that we've traveled, in the two loops that we made in around in the city and also to Jefferson, uh, we haven't seen a tremendous amount of debris. But uh, let me swing over here and wipe the lens one more time. Uh, we are now at Canal Street. Uh, as you can kind of see, if you see that wind and rain whipping around uh, coming down, these are some of the more intense waves that we've seen. Uh, it's hard to gauge. We don't have a wind meter to measure the speed here, but some of the stronger waves and bands of this storm uh, have been fairly recent to us. And this is still some of the areas and parts of the storm uh, that is supposed to be still coming on to the metro area. Um, let me pan up here, go back forward. Jeff, why don't we head towards City Hall here? We'll go straight, heading towards Poydras now. Uh, as you can see, there's not a tremendous amount of debris here, but we'll eventually mark, make our way to St. Charles Avenue, and you'll see a good amount of debris, uh, more tree limbs. And as safely as we can, we're not sure if we'll be able to kind of get through that area. If we can traverse that area, we will, but we're not going to risk uh, any flat tires at this point. I'm going to switch cameras in just a second here, guys. To okay. Now we're going to go to the front windshield camera here. Uh, and this is to directly what the driver is seeing. That's Jeff Hackett, our photographer here at WWL-TV. Uh, we are approaching City Hall here. As you can see, the traffic lights are still operating here. Uh, we've had some significant wind gusts here and there uh, and waves of, of rain, but nothing to the point that we're seeing a, a massive amount of debris being thrown and blown around. Uh, earlier, if you were joining us in previous kind of uh, trips around the city, we did see a large awning near Decatur and Toulouse as we were headed towards Jackson Square uh, that was uh, attached to an establishment uh, that had collapsed partially because of the limited amount of information that we can get. We can't say if there were any injuries there, but we assume, we can only assume, we can't verify, we can assume uh, that there was no one out at that time uh, when that collapsed, so we're hoping that no one was injured. Uh, as we're getting closer to Claiborne Avenue and the overpass here. Uh, we are seeing a good amount of rain uh, coming down here. Again, if you're just joining us, uh, we are making our way towards uptown New Orleans at this point on WWL-TV. Uh, if you're joining us on YouTube, we thank you for joining us. We hope that you're safe. We hope your family is safe. Uh, what we're trying to accomplish here is to give people an idea of what is happening in the city. Uh, we'll also be, if we can, uh, be, we'll be heading out west to Jefferson Parish as well. Um, the impacts and the effects of the storm are supposed to be significant uh, further west of us here from uh, Orleans Parish, and we understand that Kenner and Metairie will be feeling significant effects from the storm as well, um, and also on the west bank of Jefferson including let's let's go straight Jeff let's go straight and we'll loop around and then see how far we can get here now you can kind of see that wind really picking up and you're see seeing some of that driving rain here as well keep going straight Jeff let's this will eventually put us down through near MLK um, but if we can let's swing around after here. Uh, you know, disheartening is you probably see some of the folks that don't have shelter right now are still staying underneath the overpass here along Claiborne Avenue. Um, that is disheartening. Uh, we hope that they will stay safe. Yeah, 
now we're going to swing around and head over to St. Charles Avenue if we can. Uh, and as we do, we will experience a good amount of down trees, and maybe it might be better to go on the backside on MLK. Uh, to kind of, to, yeah, yeah. Let's let's go to MLK so we avoid all the down trees. Um, we'll give people an idea. Hang a right here. Yeah, let's yeah let's let's hang a right here on on MLK. We're approaching Central City and OC, OC Haley Boulevard as well. Uh, we're taking this route because from our initial trip uh, before on St. Charles Avenue, there was a good amount of downed trees, and we also don't want to jeopardize and risk uh, getting a flat tire uh, right now. And, you know, it's a very eerie scene, as you can imagine, with this being in the middle of the afternoon on what normally would be a Sunday. Uh, but because of this storm, it is a very dark, gloomy afternoon uh, with very little humanity on the streets at this point. Yeah, let's, let's keep on going here. I believe if you, eventually if you can take a left, Jeff, when you can, let's get back onto St. Charles Avenue to give people an idea of the level of downed trees that we have here. And that's not necessarily indicative of everything uptown, but St. Charles is also a good familiar scene and a familiar site for people to kind of orient themselves that they know uh, where they are uh, and certainly for people that are viewing from out of town uh, the level of fame that St. Charles Avenue enjoys will kind of give you a good place to kind of orient yourself to where we are in the city. Uh, now, right now we also had seen a significant amount of flooding which is a very positive sign but again uh, we are still kind of in the early stages of the storm making its effects and its impact here in Orleans Parish. Uh, we're still waiting to get a clearer picture of what's happening further down southwest of us uh, in Lafourche and Terrebonne parishes. Uh, in essence, those areas were ground zero for Hurricane Ida. Uh, you know, this will come out eventually, uh, but there's been speculation that this is probably one of the stronger storms and strongest storms that has hit the state of Louisiana in the last century. Uh, and as we're coming up here on St. Charles Avenue, uh, there is a good amount of pooling, at least on this street right here. Um, but prepare yourself, hang up right here, Jeff. You'll start to see a good amount of debris, um, and we're starting to see some pooling on the right here. I'm going to switch to a different camera so at least I can kind of give people a, a different view on here. And just bear with us as we're switching between cameras, everybody. We're trying to get to a point where I can kind of swivel around uh, and show you what we're seeing on uh, Charles Avenue. We are heading uptown now on St. Charles Avenue, leaving kind of the area of the CBD downtown area um, right now. So you take a look to your right. There's a good amount of uh, swing back. Just give can it, swing give it. Real quick uh, so you can no. take a look at this. Yeah. So we're gonna swing back around here. We could be awning the balcony. Yeah. So there is the coach house. Hold on just a second. And there's some folks here, right? Now. Hold on, Jeff. Sorry. I'll apologize for this. This is the first time for us familiarizing, at least me, uh, using this camera here. But there's some media covering this, but we are at the Coach House near St. Charles and on St. Charles Avenue. And take a look at some of the damage that we're seeing here to the awning. That kind of gives you an idea of some of the wind and kind of waves of wind that you're seeing with Hurricane Ida. Nothing catastrophic for sure, but it is significant here uh, for this establishment here on St. Charles Avenue. Can we pull back out here. Can you reverse out of here? Yeah. 
and we're going to turn around now and obviously that just trying to give you a sample of what we're seeing here as we're making our way in and around the city of New Orleans. Bear with us. Uh, this this will be a little disorienting here as I, I'm going to punch up the other camera so we can get our bearings here. Then I'll fix the other camera. Okay, now you're you're getting the driver's perspective. I'm going to fix the camera on my end so in case we need to swivel around eventually we'll be able to do so. But take a look at some of the tree limbs uh, that are down on the right there. This isn't surprising because you can, as you can imagine, St. Charles is a tree-lined street. Um, some very historic trees here. Uh, for many folks, they'll understand that this is where the Mardi Gras parades roll down as well. Um, but right now, we're kind of trying to navigate our way to make sure that we can give you a more accurate understanding of what the storm is doing. And I'm sure many people are anxious to see their neighborhoods if they're out of town. We will try to get to as many neighborhoods as possible. Um, and that really is dependent on the amount of debris on the ground and whether the conditions uh, from the storm will allow us to do so. And you know, Just keep in mind that there may be a point uh, during this trip for us that if the conditions get too unstable, we will certainly seek shelter uh, near a sturdy structure and wait for those conditions to improve for us to get back up and running to give you a, a different perspective, a mobile perspective of what's happening uh, here in the city of New Orleans and then eventually we will move over west to Jefferson Parish as well. And you might hear some inside chatter between Jeff and I, but there seems to be water coming in from that window, Jeff. And hold on here just for a second, Jeff. Let me switch cameras here. Um, this is the Cabana Club Gardens in the 2800 block of St. Charles Avenue. I'm going to switch cameras for a second. And I'm going to swivel over to show you the, some of the tree limbs that are down here. Uh, again, nothing catastrophic, but it also will give you an idea of, of what really the storm is doing here. So this is the Cabana Club Gardens at 2800 block of St. Charles Avenue. Uh, structurally, it seems safe right now, uh, but there is a good amount of tree limbs down here. By no means is this catastrophic. This is understandable and anticipated uh, with the level of wind speed that we are anticipating from this storm. Uh, again, this has been speculated that this storm when it's all said and done will be one of the more powerful storms to hit the state of Louisiana in the last 100 years or so um, but we are still in the midst of it. Jeff let's when you get a chance we'll keep on proceeding uptown as much as we can. I'm going to switch back to the driver point of view camera here if I can. You're now getting the driver's point of view that's Jeff Hackett that is navigating us uh, uptown on St. Charles at this point. Here and there we'll see large chunks of tree limbs and large tree limbs down, but again it hasn't been littered, uh, which is a positive sign. But as you probably just saw that, one branch coming up and greeting us. Uh, that is part of the experience of covering a storm in a mobile unit like this. We were trying our best to stay safe, but as we Try to move in between these limbs here. Um, this is something that was anticipated. And again, as you probably notice here, this is the McDonald's coming up uh, on our right on St. Charles Avenue near Louisiana Avenue. Uh, the intersection here at Louisiana and St. Charles is out of power. We don't necessarily know if that's the case for the entire block, but at this intersection, the power is out. Uh, we can probably assume that there's a good amount of power that is out in this area as well. Back in the French Quarter, we did have uh, power in some of the intersections near Canal 
also had power, but as we're going uptown right now, it doesn't seem that uptown has power. Um, if you are watching on YouTube or Facebook, um, I'm sure that you could probably comment and let us know what your power situation is, but it was anticipated that there was going to be widespread power outages, and those power outages could extend weeks, if not longer. Um, and take a look at what we're seeing now from the driver's perspective. I mean, that this is some of the kind of squalls that we anticipated with this storm. Um, they are picking up in strength, it seems like. That is just anecdotal. Um, and Jeff, when, when you see valence, let's hang a right on valence uh, if we can get to it. But there are a good amount of tree limbs now that are kind of, they're, they're the smaller versions. And so far, the oaks that have lined uh, St. Charles, they seem to be intact but it's the smaller trees that are along the streetcar line here in St. Charles Avenue uh, that seem to be kind of falling victim to the storm's power. Again, if you're just joining us, this is Tom Trong along with Jeff Hackett uh, in WWL-TV's Mobile Forecast Center. It is right now 3.52 on August 29th. Uh, we are trying to gather information and kind of get a better view of the impact of Hurricane Ida as it moves and makes its way through Louisiana and further inland. Um, and keep in mind we are also uh, staying in contact with multiple people so if you do hear phones ringing and other signals that is part of the job here as we try to cover this storm. We left the French Quarter about 10 or 15 minutes ago trying to make our way further uptown are approaching, I believe, Napoleon. Yes. I believe we're, this is Napoleon? No, where are we now? Sorry, it's been a long day, folks, if you, Hi, you can imagine. Yeah, this is Napoleon. So this is St. Charles and Napoleon. And for people that know, this is uh, an area uh, near Superior Seafood. Um, and take a look at this intersection here. You can kind of see the, the wind and the rain uh, kind of mixing and uh, looking at the trees swaying there. This is some of the more powerful kind of waves of, of the storm that we've seen so far. Um, and just eyeballing it, though, and again, I, you know, we've just stayed on the main the main thoroughfares of the city of New Orleans. We haven't seen major flooding. Um, officials here have kind of reiterated that everything within the protection of, protection of the levee system should remain uh, intact. They don't anticipate widespread street flooding. Uh, and that's dependent on that system maintaining itself. Uh, but so far, we haven't seen major street flooding. But it's very still. Though it seems like we've been talking about the storm for several days, it's still fairly early uh, in the process of the storm making its way uh, through the state of Louisiana. We're trying to do our best to navigate these tree limbs here at this point. And on our right, we'll be kind of seeing some of the areas near Loyola Avenue fairly soon. But some of these houses, some of the lights are still on uh, outside in the street lights, so there is power in this area so far. Some of those lights aren't gas lights, so those, those lights are still there. Or generators, too. Yeah, could be generators as well. Uh, good call. Right. Yeah, let's hang a right here. We're hanging a right on Valence here, coming up on the Twin Brook neighborhood. Another area of uptown here, kind of tucked in between Ferret and St. Charles. Again, we, there's not sig significant uh, debris on the street yet. It's hard to say if the, these homes right now have power. It's be just a guessing game at this point. Jeff, let's hang a left on uh, 
uh, this street. Well, no, it's a one way. Let's hang a left on the next street if we can. You know, we haven't seen many people out and about, which is a good sign um, in terms of people just heeding the warning and sheltering in place during this storm. Uh, it sounds repetitive and certainly redundant, uh, and many people are probably sick of us saying this, but you are in the best position right now, in the safest position, inside your home, inside a shelter, or evacuated, uh, watching uh, news or coverage of this. It's the best place to, the safest place to do so. We are doing our best to maintain our safety while also trying to deliver you images of what's happening in the city. Jeff, let's hang a left here. Left here. Let's hang a left here. We're coming up on, uh, looks like it's going to be Dryad Street. Let's hang a left on Dryads. It looks like there's a good amount of debris up there, so we'll avoid that, Jeff. Again, where there's... As you can kind of see, some of the strong winds blow through, and it's a bit nerve-wracking. Let's hang a left here, and let's avoid that, that debris up there. Yeah, there's a good amount of debris on that side as well. Yes, and I apologize. We are doing our best to kind of uh, narrate and kind of give you an idea of where we are. We're just trying to, as you're discovering much of this as we are too. Jeff, let's hang a left in Ferret to give people an idea of what's happening on Ferret Street. If you're just joining us again, this is Tan Trung and Jeff Hackett of WWL TV. Uh, we are in the Mobile Forecast Center. Uh, a new piece of equipment, new piece of technology that the TV station has acquired to be more mobile and utilize technology in storm coverage. Uh, and it allows us to broadcast these images uh, as the storm is happening. Uh, but we are trying to do our best also to maintain our safety. For a second here, I'm going to switch to a different camera. Okay, that is our camera on top of the unit here. And as I wipe it down, it'll give you a different vantage point. If you were able to swing the camera 360 degrees to kind of give you a better idea of what's happening, uh, that may be disorienting as we're driving too, so I'll try to limit uh, my swivel on that as much as possible. But we're coming up on Red Street in a minute. Uh, Red Street has developed uh, quite a bit in the past few years. And for those familiar, that is the, the new Rouses on Red Street. Let's hang a right here, Jeff, and eventually get on Claiborne. If, if, if you want to make your way west, we'll try to go to Jefferson if you want. Just tell me which way you want. Yeah, let's, right. let's hang a right here. Give people an idea. Let's let's see what this part of Ferret Street looks like at this point. It's mostly clear. Not a whole lot of debris on this stretch of Ferret Street as we head towards Louisiana Avenue. Good sign so far. Uh, there is some scattered and uh, sporadic debris, but so far there's not a major amount of debris that's kind of preventing us from navigating around here. And when it's safe, Jeff, let's hang a left up here and head towards Claiborne. And we're hoping and sending everybody the best in terms of New Orleanians and people who evacuated and certainly the residents in the areas that were under mandatory evacuations as well, those multiple parishes that were under mandatory evacuations. We hope that you are in a safe place, and that you are as best as you can dealing with the storm uh, wherever you are. I'm going to pan over. I mean, this 
This is also a good indicator too. Uh, the neutral grounds along certain areas are really packed with a lot of cars. Uh, for people that are unfamiliar with New Orleans, we tend to flood. And one of the areas that we can park our cars to avoid at least some level of damage is the neutral ground or the median, as some people might call it. But as you can see in this area on Napoleon Avenue, as we head towards Claiborne, uh, it is pretty packed with, with cars at this point. And interestingly enough, as you take a look on your left, I saw this, this SUV earlier. It's stuck in the mud, and I hope the gentleman who was in there uh, was able to get to where he needed to be, but he couldn't move his car because he was stuck in the mud. Uh, let's head out west, so whatever, which way you think is best is to, to go to Jefferson. Let's get people to, yeah. We're going to head west on 90 at this point, Claiborne Avenue, and we're going to head west. Uh, we haven't visited that side yet on Claiborne Avenue, uh, but this is a chance for us to kind of learn more about what's happening here. The CVS, apparently, on Napoleon Avenue is still powered. Uh, I'd imagine they have generator power there. That still has power. But as we swing over here on Claiborne Avenue, I'm gonna wipe the camera. I think it's probably better for me to switch over to the driver perspective here, point of view. If I can do that, I'm gonna cut to it right now. That might be a clearer picture for you all. Again, if you are joining us from wherever you are, we wish you the best. We hope that you are safe and your, your family as well. Uh, we understand as people who live here that during these times, if you're out of town, you're very worried about your home, you're worried about your neighborhood. And as much as we can, we'll just drive around to give people an idea of what the city looks like and uh, certainly Metairie Jefferson Parish as well. We're trying to make our way out there, Kenner. When you're away, you worry about what you're, what's happening at home uh, during a storm and how your home is faring. Uh, we can't necessarily visit specific addresses here, but we're going to go through neighborhoods as much as we can to give you an idea of at least the areas that you may be familiar with, what's happening there. Uh, it certainly doesn't tell and explain the full story of it, but we're trying to give you a little bit of an idea, give you a benchmark of what's happening in terms of flooding, uh, debris, down trees, electricity. And as we head west on US 90 on Claiborne Avenue, uh, this area seems fairly clear as you can see. There's not a much debris that, that is inhibiting us from moving west right now. Uh, but as I indicated before, when you get into those areas, St. Charles Avenue and Carrollton Avenue and Esplanade Avenue, those areas that have a lot of trees that are kind of creating that tree canopy, we have a good amount of tree branches and limbs that are down on the street. Here, you'll have it sporadically, but not as much as those areas that I mentioned earlier. It is now 4.04 on Sunday, August 29th. Again, this is Tan Trung for Channel 4 WWL-TV, Jeff Hackett of the same establishment. We are in the Mobile Forecast Center covering Hurricane Ida. The storm came very quickly and developed fairly quickly. Uh, the mayor said that that presented a situation where calling a mandatory evacuation and triggering contraflow was going to be impossible. Other parishes, uh, including St. Charles and Terrebonne and Lafouche, uh, Lower Jefferson Parish, uh, certainly Grand Isle, called for mandatory evacuations ahead of this storm. The storm made landfall southwest of us, and as it makes its way further inland, areas of Orleans, Jefferson, Plaquemines, and St. Bernard will do their best to take on the waves of effects that this storm is delivering. August 29th, as many of you know, is the day that Hurricane Katrina 
made landfall and physically changed the landscape and the lives of many people here in Louisiana. try to avoid comparing storms, especially as they're still operating, but the fact that this storm is hitting on this specific date is significant for many people who went through uh, previous storms and certainly the one on August 29th in 2005. Now we're heading towards uh, the Carrollton the Sewage and Water Board Carrollton plant. Again, there's a good amount of debris uh, that was behind us, but here it seems to be much clearer. But to the left, as you can see, there is a, a certain level of debris that we're seeing. The traffic lights here are intermittent. Uh, this one is still powered. We hope that wherever you are, you're safe and your power situation is stable. Uh, if you chose to shelter in place and as we say, right out the storm, uh, we hope that you're doing so safely. And if you lose power, we hope that that situation is changed uh, fairly soon. But do anticipate and do understand that many of the parish and governmental officials warned us that any power outages and power situations uh, would be extended. And we're getting a message from Osama that would we consider going to New Orleans East? We will try. Uh, we wanted to give you people the, in Jefferson Parish an idea of what's going on there. Um, again, just be patient with us. We are doing our best to, uh, as a single unit, cover multiple areas. Um, we will head out to Jefferson Parish uh, as much as we can, uh, maybe to Kenner, and then we'll swing and make our way east uh, to give people an idea of what's happening here. So please be patient with us. Uh, we understand that people may be anxious and very curious about what's happening in their neighborhood. We understand that for sure. Um, so as we make our way to Jefferson Parish first, we'll do so and we'll try to figure out a game plan for us to get east to assess the damages out there. And perhaps uh, also the West Bank, uh, which is something that we've yet to see as well. The, some of the forecasting anticipated and predicted that the stronger winds and the stronger bands of wind and rain from Hurricane Ida uh, would be significant west of Orleans Parish. Uh, that would be parts of Metairie and Kenner and also the West Bank of Jefferson Parish. And that includes uh, Gretna and certainly Algiers for New Orleans as well. So we will try to get to those places as much as we can. Um, so far the conditions as we've been driving around, haven't been significant enough to, to block us, but just as I say that, as luck would have it, we have it looks like it's a downed power line that we may not be able to navigate this side and we may just go around it, uh, Jeff, and if we can safely kind of get on the other side and just maneuver around it, let's try to do so. Again, that's a good example. Um, Jeff, let's swing around there, and that way we can get some pictures and show folks of wh what's happening here. And then we'll try to keep on going westward if we can. Let's hang a right here, and then I'll switch the camera view. And bear with us as I switch the camera here. We apologize for any disorienting stuff. Well, maybe Jeff can just show us. There you go. So that seems like that's, I would say that's a transformer, huh, Jeff? Yes. Yeah, that's a transformer down here. Um, we didn't want to run the risk of crossing that, obviously. And that is a bit of 90.7 that Jeff accidentally turned on. Again, we are human, and we are trying our best to cover the storm in a mobile unit that has multiple buttons and levers, and sometimes you accidentally turn on the radio when you want to uh, switch over to a different area. Again, uh, we were on US 90 headed west trying to get to Jefferson Parish, Metairie, Kenner to give people a broader view of what's happening in different parishes here. Uh, we just swung around uh, the opposite side of US 90 to avoid that transformer. Uh, Jeff Hackett, our photographer and navigator right now, is now going to return to that westward route and head further west as much as we can. That was the sound of another exploding 
transformer, I believe. Um, so again, uh, we are, as they said, still in the thick of storm coverage, still in the thick of the storm making its way inland. Uh, conditions can be very unpredictable, and just as we were crossing this area, the hazard lights on this intersection just popped on. Uh, it is a reminder and a, and a good physical example of why people should stay inside. Um, we are in a very secure vehicle. We are going at a very slow speed. Um, we are also not trying to venture out anywhere. Again, keep in mind when conditions will worsen, there may be a point uh, that we will have to pull off near a secure area and just shelter in place while those conditions pass through. Um, but there is a good amount of wind and rain here as we head further west on US 90, going through Jefferson, uh, headed towards Oxner uh, Hospital at this point. And if you stop here, Jeff, let me, let me switch over to this camera just to kind of give people an idea of Okay, let me cut over here. I apologize, let me wipe off the camera. So, as an example, I apologize here, I'm trying to, those power, those traffic signals, um, as we're getting these guts will start whipping around, um, you're going to start seeing, we're feeling another, and it's coming from behind us here. That's kind of a good example of what the wind is doing. These trees to the right of us here. Some of the stronger gusts are coming at this point. Again, it's hard for us to gauge how powerful these gusts are. We're inside of a, of a car, so keep that in mind. Let's keep on heading west here, Jeff. Oxner, one of the larger, oh, yeah. Some of the traffic signals broken there now on, on the street there. Oxner, one of the larger medical systems uh, in this area. We're just passing that campus right now. Wipe off the lens. I'm going to switch over to the driver POV again. That seems to be a clearer picture. For folks in a little bit more stable. And I apologize for the shaky camera work. I'm using one hand for a microphone with a microphone, and the other, my offhand, uh, navigating and swiveling that camera. So it may not be the most stable. So I apologize for that. Again, we're heading west into Jefferson Parish now. This eventually will, I believe, dump us into Harahan uh, on the back yeah, side. Yeah, so let's let's swing around there. To Harahan? If oh, you want. If we go, go ahead, Jeff. Uh, we can go down Clearview. Yeah, we can. I think we can go down Clearview. That it'll just kind of give people a. a you know, a good sense of where things are. Um, th there's some landmarks there, some major shops, that, especially in Harahan, that people kind of know. Uh, again, there seems to be power here, at least on the traffic lights. Uh, not sure if that's indicative of the areas uh, left and right of us, but uh, there seems to be power so far. Just passing the causeway now. Coming through. I'm not switching over to that that swivel camera at this point, but there there's a some scattered debris, garbage cans uh, on the street at this point. That's to be anticipated. Uh, but so far, we haven't seen too many downed power lines. Uh, we did see that one back a little bit further. That really has been the major, the only down power line that we saw. Again, that's not indicative of the entire picture here in the metro area, but for our experience, that's the first down power line that we ex we came across. 
And then we had the exploding transformer, which I gotta say, uh, woke us up a bit. But for, for now, it seems like there doesn't seem to be uh, a sense of emergency there. But again, we are still in the process of this storm making its way inland and kind of unleashing its power on the rest of the parishes here. Uh, the southwest part of the state, uh, certainly the southwest part of our viewing area got the brunt of it earlier. And this storm, as large as it is and as powerful as it is, it's now going to affect other areas, including Baton Rouge as well. And right on our right, we're passing Haydell's Bakery for people that are familiar with the area. Uh, excellent king cakes, obviously. Uh, better times to talk about there. Uh, and as we approach uh, getting closer to Harahan, it, it seems to be a little bit more calm here than it was uh, back behind us. And for those of you familiar here, the Jefferson Feed and Seed is on the side here, the Pet and Garden Center. coming close up to the Huey P. Long Bridge eventually, and then we'll be hanging a right and then kind of making our way back uh, to Metairie. Yeah, let's, when, when, when we get to uh, that split, let's hang a right uh, and then we'll yeah, head towards Metairie. That'll kind of give people an idea of, of what we're seeing in Metairie. And honestly, folks, sometimes there'll be periods that I won't say much because it's for the sake of, uh, and at the risk of sounding repetitive, I just don't want to fill the air all the time. It's been a long day. I'm sure it's been a long day for all of you here. Yeah. Keep going, Jeff, and then hang a right. Keep going, hang a right up here. Yeah, let's circle around here. Yep. But visually, this kind of gives you an idea of what, what's happening uh, in some of the major areas that people often travel. Yeah. This is one of the more powerful kind of shifts in the, in the weather right now that we've been seeing. And as I mentioned before, some of the forecasting has predicted that the areas west of Orleans Parish would get more wind and rain uh, than in previous storms, and certainly for this storm. And this is an area that usually, as uh, many locals know, uh, would normally be packed. Uh, you have major shopping areas. Uh, this is we're seeing some of the water that's uh, pooling up now on the road. Most of the time you would see the, the shopping shopping centers here on our left uh, would be packed. Uh, there's also a movie theater here pre-COVID that was also a destination for people to watch movies. Uh, the Jefferson Parish Council the East Bank headquarters are here as well. Wendy's What's up? Wendy's sign fell down. Apparently, Jeff informs me the Wendy sign fell down. So we will uh, hopefully know where to go when that pops back up. And, and it's not the Chick Fil A. But on our left is the Best Buy, um, also the Home Depot. In normal times, very very busy uh, in this area but we're gonna take it up and go to Clearview Parkway and head down into Metairie to give people an idea of what's happening in Metairie. And as I mentioned earlier, I understand people probably want us to get to different parts of uh, the city and the metro area. We will try as much as we can and as safely as we can, uh, but there may come a point that we just have to pull off and, and seek some shelters. Uh, and perhaps because we're kind of in the open road right now, the wind seems to be exceptionally strong right now. Let me just pull back from the microphone and let you listen. And if you 
take a look at the right up there, the billboard. The material just kind of flapping in the wind there. Certainly as you get in the elevated parts of a, of a road, it gets a little bit more precarious. And now we're coming up on Airline Highway. A little bit more debris on this side, some of the trees that are flanking the street here tree limbs, nothing major. But take a look at some of the palm trees that you're seeing just kind of flapping sideways at this point. That Stop here, Jeff. Let me, uh, so I'm going to switch cameras just to kind of give you a different view. Pardon me here. I'm going to wipe it off first. But let me zoom in. So this is near the ideal or ideal market, as some people call it here, uh, on Airline Highway, uh, often frequented by many of our Hispanic population. Uh, but look at the palm tree, look at Airline Highway, that drive, that street, you know, just getting tossed and blown in the wind there. Um, kind of gives you some a better sense of what's happening in terms of the wind speed and the wind strength. I certainly know that's unscientific in the way that I described it. Uh, but this is some of the heavier bands of, I would say, Jeff, don't you? This yeah. is some of the heavier wind and rain that we've seen so far. Um, this is pretty significant. We have a van crossing our area here. So let's, let's head over there, Jeff, as much as we can, yeah. Now we're just crossing Airline Drive, heading into Metairie. I'm going to switch over back over to the driver PLV just a second here. It's a little bit more steady shot. And the wipers uh, tend to do a better job than the wipers on the roof cam. We're headed towards Metairie, uh, clear view. Jeff's getting a message, hopefully a good one. That doesn't s sound good. is the National Weather Service uh, calling us of extreme wind conditions. Uh, I believe We're going to go to where uh, three towers on a house. Okay. Yeah, we are making our way uh, to an area in, is it Metairie? In Metairie, yes. That there's a report of a tree falling onto a house. Uh, not surprising with the amount of wind that we're experiencing here, um, but certainly not good news for the owner of that house. Again, if you're just joining us, this is Tan Trung at WWL-TV, Jeff Hackett also of WWL-TV. We are, we made our way from uptown New Orleans, and now we are headed uh, into Metairie, drove west on Claiborne Avenue into Jefferson Parish, we saw a down trans transformer on that area. And it looks like we're coming up on something here, Jeff, so be careful here. Looks like it's a garbage can. Just for you to familiarize with who's speaking here, I'm Tan Trung with WWL-TV. Packet, I wish I could show him. He is navigating and driving. We are in the mobile forecast center, and we are, as much as we can, 
trying to be safe and Jeff is showing me let me cut over to a different camera so you can actually just see uh, where we are we're headed towards Clearview and I'm trying to read what the message is saying and we'd like to thank everybody joining us from YouTube at this point um, wherever you are joining us we hope that you're safe and the purpose of what we're trying to do is to give you a better sense of what's happening uh, in the metro area. Uh, we're not trying to be heroes or cowboys at this point uh, and being cavalier about anything. Uh, what we're trying to do is give you a sense of what's happening in certain neighborhoods because we understand that when you evacuate, if you're evacuated or if you're sheltering in place somewhere, the only perspective that you have is right in front of you. And with this mobile unit, what we're trying to do is take you into different parts of the metro area to give you a sense of what's happening in some of those land areas that you may know. If you're in Mary, then you know exactly where we are. We're coming up near the Target, uh, near Clearview. Uh, so far, there hasn't been major debris on the road coming from Harahan into Metairie here. But what is happening is that we're starting to experience and starting to get some of the longer bands of wind and rain that we made land. And so on. Are feeling some of those effects now. Um, and as Clearview Mall. Um, there's this, uh, I can see, you know, bits of pooling water on the road here, but in terms of debris, there's not much. Uh, the traffic lights are out uh, near the target here, where the AMC is as well. And it's quite eerie because there is no one uh, in sight, which is a positive sign because that means everybody's where they need to be uh, in terms of seeking shelter. Uh, but it's also because this is always such a busy area and so heavily trafficked, it is strange to see it so empty. Uh, but I suppose after the last year and a half when people had to shelter in place and quarantine for COVID, uh, perhaps empty streets isn't such a novelty anymore. Uh, but this is Certainly a dis different situation as we are now on the 16th anniversary of Hurricane Katrina and we are reporting on the effects and the impact of Hurricane Ida. The storm came on very quickly and forced a lot of people to make emergency plans very quickly and that can be unnerving for people who have gone through the process before of preparing for hurricanes. Certainly especially this day, those that remember August 29th of 2005 will understand why a hurricane hitting on this day can be difficult and can be significant. Uh, we are right now traveling in Metairie, coming off Clearview.
both sides of the line down both sides of the street uh, were encountering a good amount of debris and tree branches um, as we're coming here uh, as you probably saw just earlier we were traveling on Clearview Parkway uh, that was relatively smooth sailing in terms of debris uh, but take a look at the the wind and rain uh, at this point the wipers are kind of allowing you to get a clear picture but this is some of the more significant bands of rain that we've gotten in the last 45 minutes or so. Uh, certainly for us here uh, in the greater New Orleans metro area, this is for us, at least from traveling uh, in Orleans and Jefferson Parish, this is some of the more significant amount of rain that we've seen all day. Uh, luckily, we are inside, traveling inside uh, a mobile unit, so we are able to broadcast continuously here and to deliver these pictures. And at points, uh, I will have to apologize for the rambling, but it's also a, can be a taxing and uh, exhausting process for us to walk you through this. And sometimes it's probably better for me just to quite honestly shut up and let you see what's happening and what the storm is doing. Uh, at least in this part of Kalani, there's starting to see a good amount of water uh, on both sides of the street. And Jeff, let's, if you can, let's, let's pause here for a minute. I wanna, I'm gonna switch cameras and show you what the rain is doing to some of the rooftops. Um, I can switch over here. I can just pan, that's okay, Jeff. Just, yeah, I'm gonna cut over here. Let me wipe off the camera first and then I'll pan over. kind of see that zoom in for a little bit watch that rain hitting the, the rooftops that wind you see the trees in the back uh, this is some of the more significant kind of effects of the storm that we've seen in terms of wind and rain so far uh, it is really coming down at this point And obviously you're watching from your, your perspective here and, and the safety of uh, your environment, but uh, some of the wind gusts we're really feeling in, on the unit at this point. Nothing devastating for us here, uh, but it's significant enough for us to kind of feel it. Uh, yeah. Jeff is the photographer here. I'm generally a person that's in front of the camera, so I apologize for the shaky camera work, but I don't necessarily want Jeff to drive and work the camera. But look at the rain coming off the roof and what the wind's doing. Just a sampling of what this storm is delivering to this part of Jefferson Parish in Metairie. All right, Jeff, if you feel safe enough, let's, uh, let's head back on the road here, make our way over. I'm gonna switch back over to the driver POV so it's a little bit more stable for you all. Getting the same perspective as Jeff Hackett, our navigator here in the Mobile Forecast Center. We're still in Kiwani, coming up on Cleveland right now, it looks like. Hold on here, is this just the house, Jeff? And take a look here, everybody. Uh, again, this is so far the, the more dramatic, uh, one of the more dramatic images that we've seen. I'm gonna switch over. If I can, 
number six. Nope, number five. Excuse me as I talk to myself, trying to fami familiarize myself with which cameras to use. I'm going to wipe that over. I apologize for the shoddy camera work. Uh, yes, that is a tree down on a house near the intersection of Kwani and Cleveland. It's leaning up against a cypress tree that is holding it from hitting the house. And Jeff has informed me it is leaning up against a cypress tree, which is preventing it from entering the house in many regards. So it's unfortunately leaning on the house. Uh, we certainly hope that it stays that way uh, throughout this storm. Uh, but as you can see, the, the wind is pushing it towards the property and towards the roof of the house which is not a good sign. And you can take a look at what that did right there uh, to the sidewalk. And Jeff is stepping out to take some pictures. And I apologize, there will be moments that we do have to kind of get our bearing straight in terms of uh, getting pictures. Um, and also sending them back to the station. So there will be intermittent periods that we will just stop talking um, and we will have to gather some elements and some video and some sound uh, to send back to folks. So we apologize for that. And if you're just joining us on YouTube or another streaming platform, this is Tan Trung from WWL-TV, Jeff Hackett, also WWL-TV. Uh, we are near a property, next to a property near Kiwani in Cleveland. Um, and Jeff just indicated and told me that the tree that you're looking at right now, uh, as you can see, the wind has pushed it over, uh, but it's not necessarily collapsed onto the house. It is actually right now leaning on a cypress tree, which is preventing it from fully collapsing into the house. But as you can see, the direction of the wind and the rain, it is pushing that tree further and further. Uh, the force of the storm is pushing it onto the house. Uh, we certainly hope for the owner's sake that that won't be the case, uh, but that really depends on the length of time that the storm pushes that tree towards that house. So let's, uh, we're going to turn around now. Again, I apologize for the extended rambling uh, sometimes, but we we're just trying to figure this out and trying to get our bearings straight to see where else we can take you. I say let's, let's head out to Kenner because what I understand is that Kenner might, uh, might be experiencing some they, apparently they want us to stay here and uh, we're just getting word from the folks back at the station. Um, so for a moment, if you can bear with me, I have to put some equipment on so I can hear and listen to some of the folks back at the station. Um, give me a moment. This is part of live television. Are we on? We're up. We're up. If you're just joining us right now, uh, I believe uh, we are. Are we on? They're not talking to me. Okay. Give me one second as I. Can talk? Hello, hello, hello? Oh, okay. okay. We're good? Yeah. Okay. Sorry. I apologize for all of this, everybody. We are. Uh, in the mobile forecast center right now, and we're trying to juggle 
uh, multiple broadcasts. We are streaming on uh, certain platforms and different platforms on YouTube, but we are near a property right now uh, just off of Kiwani and near the intersection of Cleveland and Metairie. Uh, this is a property right now. You can see that the tree is precariously and dangerously leaning uh, on or near that house. Uh, Jeff Hackett, our photographer and our navigator here in the Mobile Forecast Center uh, tells me that there is a cypress tree right now that is preventing that larger tree from collapsing onto the house. Uh, but take a look here. Unfortunately, that tree is uh, leaning uh, towards that area, but also, as you can kind of see the direction of the wind and rain, it is pushing uh, that tree closer to that area of the house. Uh, and as long as we are in this cycle of uh, persistent wind and rain, and it's pushing onto that direction here. I'm going to zoom in because it's one of the features of the Mobile Forecast Center for us. Uh, take a look at what Hurricane Ida forced that tree uh, right off and kind of pulled that sidewalk uh, work to uh, pushing that tree towards the house. Again, uh, we have been traveling in and around the metro area uh, and we've seen certain areas that have had large trees and certainly the tree-lined streets. Uh, there's a good amount of debris uh, when we're in those areas, but we also just came off the Clearview uh, Parkway as well, uh, and it was relatively smooth sailing in terms of just the amount of debris there. But uh, again, the storm is unpredictable. Uh, in our travels here, we left the uptown area, came up US 90 uh, on Claiborne Avenue, and as we were traveling there, headed towards uh, the Harahan area, uh, there was a transformer that was down and then as we were leaving that area there was a loud explosion which we assumed was another transformer that exploded uh, but we did encounter one down transformer uh, and down power line uh, as we traveled here but again uh, if you're joining us right now we are looking at a dangerously leaning tree uh, in the area of Metairie here near Cleveland and Kiwani. Uh, again I'm told that there is a cypress tree preventing this tree from fully collapsing onto the roof uh, this is one of the more dramatic and significant pieces of uh, images or video that we've seen so far today in our travels. Uh, earlier we did see a large awning near Toulouse and Decatur uh, in an area going towards Jackson Square uh, that was significant, but uh, in terms of down trees and trees uh, being uprooted at this point, this is one of the more dramatic images that we've seen so far. Okay. I apologize for all our folks uh, on our streaming platforms. Uh, we are juggling a couple of the responsibilities right now with uh, broadcasting on YouTube and other streaming platforms and also trying to switch over to feed the broadcast on television as well. So if there's a bit of miscommunication and if you feel like we're not talking to you, uh, I apologize, but we are trying to juggle a couple of responsibilities here. We are now turning around. Uh, on Kiwani. We're still in Kiwani and we're going to try to uh, head towards Kenner to get a sense of what's happening over in Kenner. I'm going to switch over to Jeff's perspective here. Cut over so you can kind of see the driver's point of view. Sometimes for people like me, it can be disorienting when you're looking at uh, multiple cameras getting switched over, so I apologize for that, but uh, sometimes it's a better way to uh, 
give you a different perspective. So if we stop here, I'm going to switch over to the other camera. We have another down tree um, onto another house. Give me one second. First off, I'm gonna wipe off the lens. But that is a good example of what the wind is doing and causing, the amount of damage it's causing here um, in the Madurai Jefferson Parish area. Again, it was forecasted that some of the areas west of Orleans Parish would see significant wind and rain uh, just in the last 15 minutes or so. That is something that we've experienced. Uh, but again, uh, you know, we just left an area that ha had a very large tree uh, seemingly uprooted from the sidewalk and leaning very dangerously close to a house near Kewanee in Cleveland. And now we're just coming up on this house here that it looks like there's it certainly has crashed at least on one side of that house, um, but it doesn't look like it collapsed fully on that roof, uh, which is fortunate, but it is, uh, if you look at some of the branches there, of those trees, uh, you kind of sense the, what the power of the hurricane is doing here. And I say at this point, Jeff, since uh, you see some trees swaying, let's, let's move from this, from this location up the front camera again? Yeah, I'm going to switch over to our driver POV. And we are on our way. So here and there, as we see damage, um, we will try to capture it because we understand that for people who may be evacuated, uh, the biggest question often and the biggest concern that you have is how is my house? And we understand that. And as much as we can, we're just trying to go through different neighborhoods uh, to show you what's happening in terms of flooding, uh, which we haven't seen in significant forms right now, uh, but also tree damage and wind damage, so on and so forth. Uh, again, right now at least, wind damage doesn't seem to be widespread. We have seen patches, uh, but it has been significant enough that we've seen a down transformer, uh, that leaning tree, and also that down tree that we just saw here on Kiwani. I believe this is uh, near Power Boulevard, right? Yeah, we're coming up on Power Boulevard in Kiwani now. Headed towards Kenner. As, as Jeff affectionately said, bra. For locals, we will forgive him for that. But sometimes a moment of levity is needed. But as you can see here, so far, uh, we haven't seen, at least on Power Boulevard, you know, the amount of down trees or uh, down power lines as we saw in some other places here. Uh, but again, keep in mind, we're still uh, in the process of this storm moving and making its way further inland and eventually uh, moving out of the state of Louisiana. But uh, we're still in that process. And as parish and government officials have been saying all day, this is going to be uh, a very long day for the state of Louisiana. See the bond break, or whatever that is? Not, my eyes are not as good as yours, Jeff, but, but please, uh, oh yes, I do see it, yeah. It's kind of, you kind of see eventually what we're, we're going to come up on it. It looks like there's palm tree that just snapped. Could also be a power line, I'm sure. Uh, if it is, we will avoid that area, but why don't you get close to enough, Jeff, and then I'll switch the camera and we can zoom into it and see what's going on. That way we're not kind of 
going into it blindly here. Cool. And if you stop here, Jeff, let's let's just stop here. That way I can. Here, I'll get it through the turn right. Yeah. Now. It does look like it's a. Yeah. Let's stop here. Kind of, you can hear the wind howling at this point. I'm gonna punch up a different camera. turn the camera around so it give you a better perspective but it, you can see right now that up. power line yep is leaning so I'm gonna switch it right now give me just one second to clean off the lens and then we'll zoom in to see what's happening okay there we go see that looks like there's a tree limb as well but that power line is most likely going to collapse fairly soon um, that wind keeps on pushing it here and you can kind of see the other light pole right behind it eventually it looks like that that pole is going to snap trying to make our way to Kenner. Uh, you can just look at that power, that pole just kind of pulling against those, those lines at this point. Looks like that branch is trapped right on top of that power line and the in the pole itself, but I'd imagine it's where yeah, that part is gonna collapse fairly soon. Ready to get out? Yeah. Let's get out of here and I'm gonna switch over to a different camera to give you the driver POV. I don't think it would do us any good to kind of see that topple over. Yeah. And to, to this one. Yeah. There's our cell cable for the services. It's getting more and more iffy as more power is lost. Okay. And Jeff uh, also with his technical uh, you can kind of see there's a our boulevard sign is now down uh, in the West Esplanade. Let's check this going Can you hear that? Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to switch over for a quick second here. Trying to correct the camera here as much as I can. Give it one second, Jeff. Just going to cut over so people can kind of see what we're looking at. So if you look down there to the bottom of your screen, uh, right above that, the roof rack is what you'll be seeing. That's the West Esplanade Power Boulevard sign that is now blown off uh, near this intersection. and. I'll just be quiet. Listen to the wind howling at this point. Okay, I'm going to switch back over to the driver POV and let's get out of here. Move on to another part of Kenner if we can.
force. To the left, you can see the canal and the, the water there. Moving. Getting moved around pretty significantly. Uh, here and there, we're seeing bits of uh, fencing, uh, certainly down in this area, um, getting pushed over. Um, no match for the, the wind that we're seeing at this point. Again, if you're just joining us, this is Tan Trung with WWL-TV, Jeff Hackett also at WWL-TV. Uh, we are on Power Boulevard, excuse me, West Esplanade, we just left the Power Boulevard area. Um, we didn't want to keep going down that section of JP because uh, it looked like there was going to be a power line that was dangerously close to coming down. Uh, we don't want to risk crossing it. Uh, it looks like the water in the canal is getting a bit higher for sure. If you're joining us on YouTube, other streaming platforms, thank you for joining us. We hope that your family is safe. Uh, we hope that you are in a place that you can safely watch and understand what the storm is doing. We are trying our best to get to different locations of the metro area. Uh, we were in the downtown area, in the French Quarter, uptown areas in New Orleans. Uh, we made our way and took a west direction and headed out to Jefferson Parish. Let's go down Williams. Let's head towards the lake on Williams. So we are now lakebound on Williams Boulevard for people familiar with Kenner. Uh, we will try our best to head east as well uh, to get another perspective and a different point of view on the storm and what it's doing to different parts of the city and different parishes as well. Uh, now we're on Williams Lake bound, moving through Kenner. And it was forecasted that Kenner and the areas uh, west of Orleans Parish would see a significant amount of wind and rain. Uh, and at this point, this is some of the strongest winds I think we've seen all day so far in terms of sustained wind. I don't have a wind gauge with me uh, to kind of give you an approximate uh, reading on that, but as you can kind of see from the signs and the trees that are flapping in the wind, uh, it is pretty significant. And also look at some of the leaning, leaning power poles and the light poles that are now kind of just being held together by just a little bit of that one looks like it's about to snap as well. Want to go down Vintage? Let's let's head towards the lake. If we, wherever we go, let's head towards the lake. Uh, that way we can kind of crisscross. Actually, let's. Why don't we do this, Jeff? Let's let's pull up next to that Walgreens and just let's just park for a few minutes and see see what level of wind this is because I don't necessarily feel safe uh, as we keep rolling here and uh, looking at some of the power lines that keep on moving. I think that Walgreens is going to be a safe spot for us to kind of pull over for a little bit. Uh, for those of you on streaming with us in YouTube, I, I think at this point we're just for safety's sake, because the wind is picking up significantly, uh, we're going to just shelter in place behind a sturdy structure here. Um, we don't necessarily want to risk uh, just exploring for exploring sake here. So in a minute, we'll be pulling over and then seeking some shelter. Um, and we'll try to pop back on when we can, when we feel that it's safe. But we also don't want to risk staying uh, in streaming while 
these conditions are coming on shore, uh, coming through this area. Uh, it does seem like the wind is picking up stronger than before. So if you are listening in the control room or anybody on the web team, uh, it's time to take on the stream uh, and we'll be back when it's safe for us to do.